in 2012, uh, when you returned to DTM, uh, you said that you didn't expect to be so successful early in this season. Uh, with the M4 DTM, uh, did you expect to do so well right at the start? No, definitely not. As I said before, you never know exactly where you are compared to competition when you do development steps and we all did big development steps over the winter. Clearly for us it was also different because we introduced a new car with the M4. Um, so so it was not it was not clear what the, what the, the, the let's say performance uh, 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 variance would be. And in that respect, um, I'm definitely very happy the way it has panned out. But um, on one side, you know and you've learned with the M3 over two years a lot of things, which went obviously into the development of the M4. But until you run properly in a, in a race weekend configuration, you don't know it. Uh, the new M4 DTM has a different body, obviously, uh, from the M M3. Uh, how different is under it? How, uh, also underneath? Percentage, uh, how wow. different is it? Difficult, difficult to say. Obviously all the common parts completely stay the same, but clearly we have worked on, on suspension, on geometries, on things regarding the mechanical, the mechanical uh, 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 working of the car. But this was really an evolutionary process. So, so everything that we've learned and we've identified and we've analyzed really deeply the performance and the performance window of the M3. And, and out of this we derived targets for the M4 development. And, and I would say that we have achieved most of our targets that we set as goals from uh, evolutionary step M3 to M4. But um, to tell you a percentage is, is, is really difficult. Because it's not completely new and completely different parts. It's just upgrades or, or, or modifications which made shortcomings of the M3 to hopefully then benefits for the people.